hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so in the the previous video the first video uh, related to power systems engineering we discussed the basic introductory concepts related to uh, the power systems subject and the basic principle of generation of electrical energy so uh, in this video we are going to discuss in short about the various sources of energy the primary sources of energy that are uh, considered for power generation so in order to move systematically we know the power systems engineering it deals with the generation transmission distribution and utilization of electrical power along with the protection and economic consideration so these are the four main aspects of power systems engineering and the basic principle it involves first to convert the primary energy source be it uh, uh, the sun the wind water fuels or nuclear energy the primary energy source is converted into mechanical energy and then into electrical energy with a certain suitable mechanism this is the basic principle now the various sources of energy that are considered for uh, the generation of electrical power they are mainly uh, the sun wind water fuels and nuclear energy now out of these water fuels and nuclear energy they form the bulk of the the satisfy the bulk of the power requirements of the current population okay sun and wind they are still in the experimental stage but the majority of the contribution in the power uh, generation sector is from fuels water and nuclear energy okay so we will this video is all about that okay the basic characteristic features associated with it okay so let us discuss them one by one so first we have is the sun okay which is the primary source of energy okay the solar output it controls each and every aspect associated with earth the starting from the hydrological cycle so it indirectly affects the other sources of energy also but in itself how uh, it is a source the primary energy source in the generation of electrical power okay so the heat energy radiated by the sun can be used for the generation of power so first is using reflectors uh, it can be used to generate steam and then steam turbines can be used as the prime movers to drive a ac electrical generator okay to generate the required electrical energy ac electrical energy we have discussed in the generation of electrical energy section that the energy conversion it involves first the energy from the source is given to the prime mover which converts it into some kind of a mechanical motion using steam turbines or hydraulic turbines in case of water or any internal combustion engines for fuels which converts it into suitable mechanical motion which generates the required force or pressure to drive or a certain uh, mechanical object and that rotatory motion is converted into electrical energy using the principle of generator which gives us the ac electrical energy so the alternator is basically an ac electrical generator we have discussed the principle of generator and motor in the electrical machine section you can check it out there so that is the basic principle of energy conversion so we can use uh, either this or we can use the solar cells okay so that is uh, as compared to the contribution of sun in this 
sector. So what are the characteristic features associated with it? Now the problem here is that uh, for this, you know, the installation of solar cells and all that, the amount of area that is required is very large and as compared to the area which is, uh, you know, area consumption by this, uh, uh, this energy source, if we consider that, the power output is very less. So the economics, the economic aspect, it does not support this. Well, it is still in the experimental stage and in the future we have to rely on, on this because the other sources such as the fuels where the coal and natural gas and water uh, they are continuously they are depleting okay so we have to rely on sun wind and nuclear energy okay so still uh, the economic aspect it does not support it maybe in the future so and another important uh, disadvantage is that uh, it cannot be used during cloudy days and at night so it is only applicable for places where the solar the the uh, these amount of uh, energy from the sun that is maximum mainly in the equatorial regions it can be used now the next uh, source of energy uh, which we'll discuss is wind okay the energy of the blowing winds the kinetic energy of the blowing winds can be used to generate power again uh, for this windmills have to be installed which convert the energy of the blowing winds into some kind of a rotatory motion the blades of the windmill they rotate which can be used to drive a generator so here the prime movers are the blades of the the, the windmills and they drive a generator which produce the required electrical output. Now this method is uh, can be used where uh, wind blows for a considerable period of time. So again, this uh, method is unreliable because uh, we cannot get a steady, uh, you know, uh, flow of wind at a particular place for a considerable period of time regularly. So that is why uh, this method is unreliable maybe in the future we come up with a suitable way to uh, exploit this uh, source of energy so the main characteristic features is that wind energy is available in plenty we have we don't have to worry about the depletion of this uh, energy source also it does not cause any pollution less maintenance is required so these are the advantages but the disadvantages are the power output is very small okay uh, the as i said there is uncertainty about the velocity of the winds at different times so that's why it is unreliable and the output is not constant because the winds they do not blow at a certain fixed velocity all the time it is fluctuating so we cannot rely on it all the time for the rotation or the generation of the electrical energy there is certain threshold values the speed has to be at a certain fixed value if it falls below that the whole mechanism it will not work okay next is uh, water now as i said water fuels and nuclear power plants the hydropower plant the uh, fuels such as coal and uh, natural gas or petrol diesel whatever and nuclear they satisfy the bulk of the requirements of power for the current generation so in water what happens is the potential energy of water stored at a suitable uh, height that is used to generate power okay water is allowed to flow at a very high velocity uh, to rotate the water turbines converting it into some kind of a rotational motion that is a mechanical energy which drives a, a alternator to give us the required AC electrical output so here the water turbine is the prime mover and the AC it is coupled with the uh, alternator the AC electrical generator which gives us the required electrical output so the principle is the same 
okay uh, as with other we have to convert it into the energy from the source into mechanical energy and then uh, that is the prime mover and then it is given to the alternator to convert it into electrical energy now the characteristic features of the water as a source of energy is that it is quite reliable okay uh, we have uh, in places where there is a consistent uh, we have a water body or uh, such as a river or a lake there is supply of uh, water the water is flowing at a uh, fixed velocity all the time it is very reliable also it does not cause any pollution it does, uh, it does not have any harmful byproducts smokes uh, other harmful emissions also the maintenance cost is less so as i said it is a very uh, good choice when it comes to power generation next is fuels okay so the main source of uh, energy which uh, satisfy the bulk of the requirement of power generation uh, first is water then is the fuels solid fuels such as coal liquid oil and natural gas so the energy of these fuels are uh, converted into mechanical energy using suitable prime movers such as steam engines or steam turbines internal combustion engines so in some cases the fuels such as uh, they are burnt to boil uh, water in a boiler which generates steam energy that steam energy rotates the steam turbines then that rotatory motion is coupled with the alternator the ac electrical generator which gives us the electrical output or it can use internal combustion engines where the fuels uh, are uh, burned with the help of an oxidation agent which generates the required force the required pressure to convert it to rotate a certain conductor which gives us the required electrical output using a uh, ac electrical generator principle so it has various mechanisms but the main principle is that the fuel energy is converted into mechanical energy the same principle using prime movers and then it is coupled with a alternator so the characteristic features when it comes to uh, fuels uh, such as coal oil or natural gas is that the power contribution is good the output efficiency is good but the problem is that these sources coal oil or natural gas they are diminishing and may not be available in future as i said and also the initial cost of setting up this these power plants based on coal natural gas and oil they are very high and also uh, the burning of these fuels they cause smoke and the emission of other harmful and poisonous gases which have adverse effects on the environment okay so these are uh, there is some plus points there are some plus points and also some uh, negative points as well next is atomic energy the another important contributor in this sector the power generation so the main principle here is that a large amount of heat energy is released during uh, fission nuclear fission of uranium and other fissionable materials okay so nuclear fission is uh, you know in nuclear physics we have studied that the nuclei uh, nucleus it breaks down into two or more nuclei so that is uh, that uh, process is called as fission and it generates large amount of tremendous amount of heat energy so that heat energy can be used to drive or to convert it into mechanical motion to rotatory motion with the help of suitable prime movers and then we have to convert it into electrical energy with the help of suitable ac electrical generators now here is an interesting part 1 kg of nuclear fuel that is equivalent to 3000 to 4000 tons of coal so you can imagine how much of an impact 
atomic energy has as compared to the other forms of energy so as i said the heat generated by that fission reaction can be used to produce steam to drive a turbine alternator arrangement so the characteristic features associated with the choice of atomic energy as a primary source of energy is that the power output is very high but it has some other disadvantages such as the cost of setting up a power plant the initial cost and the running cost of setting up a power plant nuclear power plant is very very high also the treatment and disposal of nuclear waste is very difficult okay so these are the basic concepts associated with the these uh, sources of energy or the primary sources of energy for power generation now the contribution of various power plants uh, in terms of the power requirement the satisfaction of the power requirement is the hydroelectric power plants their contribution is around 22% the steam power plants 65% which is the uh, fuels coal oil natural gas and all nuclear power plants they contribute around 3% and the others be it the wind sun and uh, other non conventional sources of energy their contribution together is around 10% so you can see steam power plants and hydroelectric power plants they dominate here okay in terms of uh, satisfaction of the power requirements okay so here are some basic concepts related to the various energy sources uh, for power generation so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much